himself to the word of God has not this is the absoluteness of his power an open invitation to a life in the word because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith grace and peace are multiplied that is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk we lay hands on the blind and they see we lay hands on the deaf and they hear it's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application arise on the wings of revelation align your destiny transform your world this is for narrow make manifest with apostle grace lubega you love me with everything you love me with Shut up, I'm out of here. 
Just take a few minutes and express yourself in the Holy Spirit. Just express yourself before God. If you have a tongue, you can speak it. Rato badiga zobadigo shirabarada mata baradigo brodogo zogoto porodogo ko shararararararelebo sabaradigo bredegezegete. Come on, speak in other tongues if you can. If you have any other language, just speak to God. Express yourself. Mashu paradigo brodogo zogoro porodogo. Zororororo bogoro dogo brodogo zogoto porodogo. Come on, speak to God. Come on, speak to God. Masando, Sipa, Rekata, Zarobo, Zakata, Randakate, Matu Badiga, Zobara, Zoporo Dogo, Sanabarade. Come on, create something. Mando Sabadiga, Paradega Zogo, Masoto Roboto, Zoroboro Dogo Zogoto, Matu Baradega Zogoto, Masoto Poroto Poro Porodo, Rangeke Tere Paradego Zogoro Porodo, Kashanda Baradego, Sarra Paradega Zegere Poro Dogo Brodogoto. Come on, speak to God. Masha da 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 Zoro robo bobo bobo posa tabara nega bro nega zega tere para nego zoro bro dogo shoboro dogo bro dogo zoro bro dogo zara rara rara para nego shara para nega bro nego zagera zata para nega shoboro dogo come on free mano kota rara para nega zere bro dogo masara rara para nega taka 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 shoro bro dogo bo mano bobo zoro topo. Matara ra 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 Sante para de copra de gazata, sorro potolo cotoco, mande que te le para te que le pa, sorro poro do goza la 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 la, soporo do gozo cotoco roboro do go, sanda manego pro do goza caravana nega, reta manego zanda gate, you're changing us today, you're redeeming, you're changing, you're healing, you're recovering. Mando koporo dogozo, seke para la bagus, macho predegega, zora la bara degus, sare prodogoza, rande gozoro boro dogo prodogozo ko, zoro boro dogo prodogozo zoro boro dogo, sara la 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 baka tala bara de, mando poro dogozo koto poro dogozo kete, sara la 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 baka tala la 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 bara la 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 ba. Zorra bara da 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 baga de kere de de bolo lo 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 bo. Zorro ro 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 bo 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 ko zorro ro 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 bo. Zata bara da 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 lego do bo ro to. Hey, zaka pa so pa randa katana. Zorre panda guzika na para ni lego. Mano guzika da madega. Zomoro no go zogo to. Mato madega da da. Zara madego sa. So panda guzika. Rande go do go do bo go. Rupo no go zogo to. Ra 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 no go sikere de bosha. 
Retele Baralega, Soroboko Sara Banate, Socorro de Gazande, Soro Predega Sekere Baralega, Mata Baradega Sada Baradega Granda, Mata Kata Kata, Socara Tagaleda, Maradego Poro de Gozo, Mato Barade Prodogo, Masata, Soparadega, Bring them here, Maradego Sabarada, Sadra Bakata, Socorro de Gozo Borodogo, Mata Barade Prodogo. Madegosa Parade Rete Bade Rekara Brikete Konda Gosiba Moropo Rakatele Gosa Tabara de Gese Masho Paradada Ropa de Gosoboro no Gozo Matalabana Kesara Bara de Gosete Matelegete Mandago Borodo Gosa Katara Ratelege de Getele Parade Gozo Yezana Badega Mora de Baliga Matebe de Gesekete Pa Sopondo Gosoro Borodo Sada Banana, Katama de Gazoboto, No Shapa, Sopa de Kete, Maropa de Gadia, Mara de Goza, Masorata, Sopana, Rekele, Madigo, 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 Sopana Lego, Randegota, Sopa Lega, Sopata, Sakaraba, Sopordo, Sakatala, Sopara Lega, Sopordo. Sabara dego, plan dego zakata, shoko roborodo, zekere parada, rata badega, somara daga, sopotoko, matikala, matelepo, gatala, sokorodo, sadakata, shatapate, ropara dega, robalaga. If you're sick in your body, receive your healing. Mando kosete, mashara bala, rakati kato, macho borodo, rebodogo, somodo, zagade. Madake, Pradego, Masoro, Marale, Kona, Soparadega, Sopotika, Sopora, Maranda, Soreka, Masata, Ratala, Rategedi, Managete, Masoboro, Ratabade, Goporoto, Katalapa, Samaratelepa, Soborodogo, Madogoto, Katamade, Soroborodo, Sakararaba, Soroborodo, Mato Barade, Rapo Dogozo, Ratakata, Shamadakata, Maratelepa, Romadego, Soboroto, Nataraba, Soporodogo, Sarararara, Soroborokosa, Matabadeka, Ropana Lega, Ropra de Goza, Gosara Baralego, Rama de Gosaba, Zeboroko Sarabarade, Yere Prodogo, Sarapanda, Sopata, Sakate, Sarepa, Ropara de Go, Masora. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We glorify your holy name. We praise you. We give you thanks. You are a good God. You are a faithful God. You are a loving God. You are a wonder-working God. Merado, Sarede. Come on, give him a mighty hand of praise. Clap for Jesus. 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 Give him a mighty hand clap of praise. Somebody shout hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You may get your seats. Choir, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How are you? Hallelujah. You're welcome to the second service. Praise God. I see a few seats, but I empty, so that means we need to start planning for the third. Because, <laughs> yeah, because the first service was overflowing. Actually, some people were outside. So that should tell you that we need to plan for the next one. Service very soon. In Jesus' mighty name. I'm going to pray for your offering. Um, and then we'll tell you what comes next. Father, we thank you for the most generous people in the world. Amaze them. Establish them always. In Jesus' name we prayed and believed. 
Amen. Bishop Benjamin is visiting. His wife and his wife are visiting. And, and they have a team from which country? The USA. Which part of the USA are you from? Idaho. Idaho. Oh, wow. Who knows Idaho? <laughs> West Coast. Yes. How is the weather? Very cold. Oh my God. Welcome to Uganda. <laughs> The weather here, the, through the whole year, is like this. Through the whole year, we're like this. So we don't need jackets. We don't need. We don't have winter. I've never. Some of these people have never seen snow. Praise God. <laughs> One time I went in winter somewhere in Massachusetts, and I knew why. I'm Ugandan. That was. <laughs> I finally understood why. God put me in Uganda. Some of us were never called for some weather. It's not our thing. I wanted to go back and it was a conference and I, this pastor had to sit me down and tell me be ready to preach the gospel in and out of season. <laughs> so where is the pastor leading them? Do you have a representative? Please come and say hello to these Ugandans and tell them what you're doing in Uganda. Tell him what you're doing in Uganda. Hello. Yes. Blessed to be here. Thank you so much. This is a this is an honor. Uh, this is uh, my ninth trip to Uganda. Ninth. ninth. I used to, yes. God is good. I used to like winter, and then I came to Uganda, and then Uganda started getting into me. I don't like winter anymore. <laughs> Hey, bless God. Well, I'm Pastor Bill. We've got a team of, of 17 of us that God has orchestrated together. Uh, we have been praying for Uganda, this team specifically, since August. So we've been meeting. Yeah. When God tells you to do something, you take it serious. And so we've been meeting since August, praying together about this trip. And uh, Brother Benjamin, um, he got a hold of a friend of ours through our, our head pastor of our church. And uh, Brother Cliff is coming in this afternoon, and we're joining them with a, uh, uh, a gospel crusade up in, uh, I'm not, I'm going to butcher the town. I'm going to say Gulu. Is it Boyali? Boyali? Yeah. Boyali. Yeah. I'm a Muzungu. But as I've been coming to Uganda, I have, I've achieved a nickname called Mudugavu. White but black on the inside. Hallelujah. Yes, like a zebra. I am blessed. Your guys' worship's good. The Spirit of God is, is good. Uh, who's the pastor of the church? Is it you? Can I give you a word that, that the Holy Spirit gave me during worship? Woo, glory to God. Wow. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was telling me this church is a church of overcomers. A church of overcomers. This church, he was showing me that no matter what comes against this church, this church will overcome. No matter what comes against this church, this church will overcome by the word by the word and when what your testimony he's also telling me whoo glory to God he's also wanting to let y'all know with that there's also a, a higher calling of a sanctification that he's drawing you to see without without going to to go into higher places you, you got to get stuff burned off of you you got to get stuff burned off of you I'm telling you there there's a there, man, there's an anointing on this church, brother. There's such an anointing on you for this church for such a time as this, that, that this church, this church can, with, along with other churches, because we're the body, we're the body of Christ, hallelujah, that how can we not overtake Uganda? How can we not be the light of Uganda? Amen? Amen? 
So when the Lord's telling somebody, some bald-headed Muzungu from Boise, Idaho, to come and say, hey, tell them that they're a church of overcomers and it's time to sanctify. Now that doesn't mean you haven't sanctified. It just means there's more to come. And with more of that weight, with more of that glory. Amen? Amen? And I want to... I'm not saying you don't do this, amen? Honor this man of God. I don't know him. Honor this man of God. He's been appointed. He's been appointed. He's been appointed by God, not man. By God, not man. Amen? Hallelujah. Blessed to be here. I don't know how far Gulu is, like six hours? About six hours, so I mean, I guess it's too long of a drive for them to come up there. But y'all can pray for us when we're doing the crusade, right? We'll do. Amen. Brother, thank you so much. It was an honor. Thank you. Be blessed. A mighty hand clap of praise. I think bishops should plan a good time for this man to come and, and speak a bit more, don't you think? Yeah, he should. You should think about it. Greetings to those of you who are watching from the live stream centers. We are with you. <laughs> we are with you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Bishop Benjamin is a wonderful man to this family. We love you with your wife. Dangerously. Praise God. So every time he's around, I, I want to be around him. And we're doing a lot of things together to the glorification of his name and expansion of his kingdom. Thank you for being faithful. That's important. And for loving Ugandans. Bishop Benjamin eats our food. He sleeps in our beds. He's, he's a part of us. You know, one time he told me something so powerful. He told me that if God sends you to a people, the first thing you have to do is to love them. Is to love them enough to eat their food. So, when I go to America, I, I love them enough <laughs> to, to eat their food. Like they don't get our food, we also don't get their food. We don't understand it, you know. <laughs> it's a lot of cheese and sugar. But God is good. You're welcome from Idaho. Please feel free. Ugandan people are loving people and they are praying people. This land has seen things that we have seen things. Hallelujah. So allow me to go straight to the word. I want to preach for about 35 minutes and then let you go home. And we finished our 40-day fast. So some of you, I'm sorry, I did not announce on Thursday. Some have continued. Praise God. Some were almost dying. Redeem yourself and eat. <laughs> There's grace. Somebody shout hallelujah. So today I uh, have a very simple yet very profound conversation that I want to give us today. Um, and it stems from some of the things that I've seen over the years as I've walked with God. How, like the Bible says, we are corrupted from the simplicity which is in Christ. Why? Because sometimes we confuse that simplicity in Christ as though the message of the gospel is shallow. We confuse that. Or sometimes we confuse the semantics and the vocabulary with revelation. So when somebody knows how to construct their sentences right and connect them well, sometimes we think that that is revelation. You see, we confuse those things a lot. And sometimes the gospel sometimes has come even out of con conviction and it sometimes starts to sound like poetry. And it's okay if that poetry can open a blind eye, but it's not if it's constructed out of the man's heart beyond what God is able to give unction. The Bible says that there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Lord giveth what? Understanding. So, there are things that are supposed to be in their own simplicity with so much weight of interpretation if you understand it because many a times we make decisions in life commit ourselves to certain things and apply ourselves 
to certain callings and responsibilities. And many of these things work against us and then we are punished, we lose. We are in confusion and frustration, but I believe God, but I prayed, but I fasted. I did this and I did that. Where did I miss it? And we have Christians who say, but I prayed through this. How come it did not work? I came to give certain answers to people who have been frustrated along the journey of committing yourself in certain things, believing God in certain projects. Somebody uh, had an, op an offer of two jobs and you chose one and after a few months, it did not work right. And you're like, where did I miss it? You went on the marriage and you were sure you had had God and eventually something goes south and you're like, oh my God, in retrospect, I did not hear God, but it seemed like it was the voice of God. People have lost millions and millions of shillings or dollars. People have lost a lot in life. Why? Because many of us do not know how to get answers from God. Many of us do not understand the simple secret and wisdom of making decisions that are aligned to the will and purposes of God. So in the few minutes that I have here tonight, I want to open some profound uh, that I think for me has helped me because if you have lived long enough, you have at least paid a great deal because you made a decision, entered something that God was not into. And for some of the mistakes we make, they are reversible and others are irreversible. We will never be able to take that back. Are you following? Like I, I, one time I was teaching on, a, on faith and healing. And after teaching a certain mystery, a certain lady walked to me weeping. And then he said, if I had not, if I had known this earlier, my husband would not have died. She said, she said, if I had known this earlier, my husband would not have died. Yes, it was late for her to know because the husband had died many years ago. And for some, it's their children. For some, it's their careers. And many things have been frustrated across the journey of life because they did not know certain things. They did not know how to make godly decisions. They did not know how to make the right choices, to choose the right course. They didn't understand how to do that. And so Proverbs, the 16th chapter, if I will read from the third verse, if you will read with me, all of us, the Amplified Version, I don't know whether it's up there on the screen. Is it there? One, two, three, let's go. Roll your works upon the Lord. Uh-huh. Holy to him. Uh-huh. Will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his will. And so shall your plans be established and succeed. Are you following that order? Very deep. Very, very deep. And I'm going to take so much time to explain this. I'm going to take so much time to explain this. When you are at crossroads to make decisions, when you want to go ahead of something and your spirit is saying, I think I'm confused in the way that I should go, or even if you assume that you are sure about what's coming, the Bible has said, when you are in a place of making a decision or making a choice, would you learn firstly to commit something to God, to just commit it to God? There is a difference between committing an idea or an opinion or something to God from informing God and trying to manipulate him to bless it. You get it? We have people who manipulate their way around. You see, you want something. It's not within the will and purposes of God. But you think that by reason of the anointing, you are going to manipulate God's way to give you the answer of that thing because you are desperate to have it than you are for the opinion of God concerning that thing. Who has understood that? One time, there's this uh, young lady who approached me because sometimes when you are in the way of life, you want to ask a few questions from your pastors. You want to know because... It's then hard to get a second opinion, especially from a man of God, when you know that they hear God. And so this lady comes to me and says that the Lord has spoken to me about the man I am supposed to marry. Pray about it, pastor. And I prayed about it. 
And I prayed about it one month. And I prayed about it two months. And I didn't pray the second month because I had not had God. But in the second month, I was wondering, how am I supposed to explain it to somebody whose heart I see was already made up to make that decision? And they were just doing that for routine to fulfill the righteousness that, oh, I committed it to my pastor. And so she kept pestering me and I did not give her an answer for a year. Now, honestly, if God has spoken, it should not take a man of God a year to answer you. <laughs> Isn't it? But sometimes when you're a man of God, you can discern the hardness of a man's heart. And your spirit tells you that it seems this person, it doesn't matter what you're going to tell them, their heart is made up. And indeed, after long wait and pushing and pestering, she came and said, this time I'm not letting you go until you tell me. What do you want me to do? And I told her, I promise you, I've prayed about this, but I don't see in my spirit that this is what? This is right. And then she went ahead and insisted and told me, okay, I know it might not be right, but you are an anointed man of God. You can pray. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. He said, you are an anointed man of God. I know God hears you. This anointing that opens blind eyes and deaf ear. If you direct it to this man's heart. <laughs> Apostle, <laughs> it will be so and not otherwise. <laughs> oh. I told her that's not how God works. Because the anointing is subject to purpose. It's not a luxury. It's not a transaction. You understand? It's subject to the heart of God. That is why I've shared with you before. Every miracle Jesus did was an instruction in the kingdom. It was not just a place of showing off. It did not even end in just meeting the need of a man. It exceeds and goes in a place of instructing us deeply. For these things that were written, were written a for for your learning. They were written a for for your learning. That even when you read, oh, blind Bartimaeus, it's not about Bartimaeus. There's an instruction deeper in the miracle of Bartimaeus than just that miracle. So God's instructions are deeply embedded in his works. When you start to study the miracles of Christ, it's, it's amazing the things you will see in the revelation of his nature and person. The miracles, the work of God is beyond our carnal lusts, our lusts. It's beyond, you know, for example, you read a portion of scripture like whatsoever things you desire when you pray, you see, believe that you receive them and you shall have that which you have what? Ask for. Isn't that what the Bible says? So if I desire the president dead, God forbid, you understand what I'm saying? Does that mean that because I've desired it, therefore the mind of God concerning that man's destiny is disqualified because of my selfish ambition? No. There's a wisdom in God that will ask you, why do you want him dead? You see what I'm saying? But you said we shall have whatsoever we want, okay? Does that mean you're going to pray for any woman and say, Father, you said whatever we ask for. I direct my prayers on Rebecca. Fire! Marry me now or die in Jesus' name. <laughs> huh? Listen, there is faith in wisdom. There is faith in wisdom. And there is wisdom in faith. The wisdom of God is supreme. It helps you understand the judgments of the Spirit. To know that this is how I'm supposed to do this. This is how I'm supposed to say this. This, this is how I'm supposed to approach God and pray over this matter. Because his opinions are important. You don't want God to inform him that you want to get married to this person, therefore he should bless it. And you do that to us pastors a lot, by the way. You get into the wrong deals and say, Pastor, bless. You understand what I'm saying? That is why usually when somebody says, you know, I want you to pray over my businesses, the first thing I ask for, I ask them is, what business do you do? I always do that. Why? A guy who sells coffins can come. 
and tells you, Pastor, bless my business. What is his heart's prayer? A guy is selling coffins. And then he says, Pastor, bless my business. What am I saying? Should people die? What, what does he want? You understand? So you're careful in the kinds of prayers that you are what? You're, you're supposed to be praying over. But I, many times, many times, I have had people who have come with prayer requests and I feel heaven has an opinion contrary to their need. And for some, you feel the liberty to tell them this is not the will of God in this. Don't even pray about this. It won't work. And then there are those, God will tell you, uh-uh, they're on a journey. Just let them be. And pray this way. You see? Pray this way, not that way. So our prayers sometimes are deliberate. Because you know, this person is not going to understand it this way. But when you pray this way, I will help them understand it the other way. You see? So it is even out of order for me as a man of God to pray over a person based on their own individual leading. I must seek the mind of God before I lay a hand on an individual. One time I was in a meeting and somebody came forth and put up their hands and as I was stretching my hands to touch them, the Spirit of the Lord told me, don't touch them. Don't. 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 And I said, oh, what's happening? And the Lord told me, Ask this girl who her pastor is. So I ask her, who's your pastor? She tells me. And the Lord tells me she has rebelled against her pastor. And what she's supposed to get from that hand, she thinks she can get here. I told her, go to your pastor and tell him to pray exactly over you what brought you here for me to lay hands on you. And she looked at me with this of, but me and my, no, 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 no. If you have to make peace with him, so he speaks that over you, it's important. Why? Because me and him are the same. We're all men of God. And whatever has frustrated the spirit of that man has frustrated the spirit of God. Go make right. You see? But you see, when you are, when we were little, a bit, a bit, a bit younger, huh? when we were a bit younger, we were so fascinated with speaking prophecy and laying hands. We were so quick with our mouths. Power the Holy Ghost. Oh, 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 you do that. And then as you continue to grow, God says, uh -uh, this time I want you to seek my opinion in when you do this and why you should do this. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout amen. amen. Now, back to what I was trying to tell us. So, why it's important to the kingdom of God for you to commit this because sometimes we will agree that you are spirit with a soul in a body. You agree? You're three, right? And the Bible says that the enmity, the spirit is enmity with the flesh. The flesh will never agree with the spirit. The spirit will never agree with the flesh. The, the soul is in the middle of the two, depending on where or whoever is stronger. You'll melt your emotions or affections either to the side of the spirit or you'll melt your affections and emotions to the side of the flesh depending on who at that point is strong and the prevailing circumstances. You agree? So for example, um, if you are not a praying person, you're not a fasting person, you're not given to God, you, you don't study the word, you're not a person, you might be born again, but the word of God has not transformed your life. You see? <clears throat> and then somebody provokes you. Huh? One time, <laughs> I saw a video of a priest Nice guys with collars. And then there was an interviewer who stands before this old man. He should have been in his late 60s. And he asked him, what is the one or oh, biggest, I think the word was, is the one or oh, biggest virtue that you believe all humanity should possess? And this priest in front of the camera, he said, forgiveness. And as he spoke that, a boy kicked a ball. The ball came before camera and it hit the priest's head. And he turned. He forgot he was on interview. <laughs> you understand? No, he, he just said, forgiveness. You understand? He just said what? Forgiveness. And a ball has hit him and the guy's attitude has changed. So that's a man who is still on a journey of what? Of transformation. The soul agreed with the flesh. <laughs> 
You see, the soul agreed with the flesh. That, those two are always going to be enemies. And what God calls us to do usually is to live, I mean, to feed and sustain mostly the man of the spirit, isn't it? To sustain the man of the spirit. So it means that many times our brains, our minds will find themselves doing or saying things that sometimes are not agreeable to the will of God because the flesh is always an enmity to the spirit. You see? So it's not just enough to say that I'm pious. I have a fear of God every time I'm praying, I'm fasting every time. Yeah, in one way it's good. But how you pray, how you relate with God is important too. Because our God is a God of what? Principle. And you can never underestimate the power of the mind in how you relate with God. Romans, Paul says that I serve the law of God with my mind. He says, with my mind, I serve the law of God. You know what that means? It means that your mind has a place. It contributes something in your service to God. He does not separate you from your mind. That means your thought process is important in creating the reality that God has connected you to concerning his will. You see, your mind is important. We have had experiences of, of, of you know, flames coming and people are filled by the Holy Spirit. And then somebody said, when the Holy Spirit came upon me, I don't know. I just found myself saying this. That's not the Holy Spirit. He does not set you beside yourself. He sets you above yourself. There's a difference. You keep your intellect. The spirit of the prophet, the Bible says, is subject to the word, to the prophet. We, one time I was in a, <laughs> one time I was in a, an overnight. And then this girl, in the name of the spirit of God is upon her. She walked. And then she went on somebody. And slapped a girl in the overnight. Pah! Why are you sleeping around? So, she was meant to tell us that this was God, what? Angry. And he was walking through her to hit somebody's head so hard because they're sleeping around. You understand what I'm saying? I said, this is not the spirit of God. This is a familiar spirit. And true to form, we cast it out that night. And it manifested. It manifested. You understand? Because we have a lot of people who have expressed so much madness in the name of God told me. God told me. I don't know. I don't know. I just found myself one time we were, <laughs> one time we were in a meeting and this young man just got something on his head and he went laying hands on everyone. But the way he was doing it, I said, this is not, this is not God. <laughs> because where the spirit of God is, there is order. You see? Galatians, Paul says that how I went up by revelation to preach or minister the mystery of God but firstly to them which were of reputation least I have run my race in vain what is it telling us? that no matter how much inspired you are by the Holy Spirit ask those who are leaders and tell them look the whole, I feel the Holy Spirit is telling me to lay hands on sister Miriam what do you feel man of God? If the man of God says no let God charge it on him he says, do it as the Lord has told you, do it. But we have Christians who have become so disorderly in the name of the word, the Holy Spirit. You understand? Unacceptable. Tell your neighbor, unacceptable. So, anyway, so our work really, when we are relating with the person of the Holy Spirit, when we are connecting our spirits to the word of God, is that somehow the flesh, the man of the flesh continues to die. He continues to die. Jesus said, I've, like I said, I've sanctified them through thy word, thy truth. When the word of God comes, it's taking you to deeper places of sanctification. But what is it really doing? It is killing the flesh that the man of the spirit will agree. Why is it important? Because the spirit realm is so alive. And everything in this world is connected to it. Whether you agree or you don't agree. The spirit realm is so, so, so alive. And not only is it alive, I, mean, I believe all of you agree, but many people don't understand the responsibility that we have in being sons of God 
and represented in the other realm. Some people think it's a very simple thing. We take it so lightly because we don't understand it. Listen, God has told you everything that has been created in the world has an expectation from you. Everything. If it was not so, our master would not be so crazy to speak to trees. He walks to it, the Bible says, and he finds no fruit. What does he do? He tells it, let no man eat from you. If, if he was doing it in 2022, before what some of our religious people would be like, what's wrong with this guy? But the God you believed speaks to stones. He speaks to waters and seas. He, he, he's that God. He, if you don't learn to be that way, you're going to be a survivor in the world, not, not a victor. You're going to be a survivor. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. I was telling people in the earlier service that if, even when I'm speaking to my daughter, I don't speak to, she's, she's one year and one year and a few months. I don't speak to her like a child. Sometimes I, my wife as well does it. She can have a very old conversation with this girl. Something you expect, expect probably to, to be speaking to a 30 year old. And they're talking and we do it all the time. And then you tell this girl, you know, man, things are not moving, da, da, da. And as you're talking to her, she just raises her finger, da, de, do, 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 do. She then, you see, she's, she's light years apart. Are you hearing me? But it is an exercised spirit that has taught us to learn to speak from certain places because we think her spirit, her soul, that's old. Before it was formed in its mother's womb, he knew her. You see, so we, we talk to her as an adult. We, we live from the end of things. And as she continues to grow from the beginning, we are just coming for her from the beginning. But from the end of it, we want, you understand? You learn to speak to your shoes. You learn to speak to your bag. You learn to speak to your... Recently, I was driving. And my car got an alert. You know how cars get these things? Yeah, there is... Some of these interesting cars, they always make statements, <laughs> spoke some language. And then it showed me that something was faulty. I remember I was driving. And when I looked at this fault, I said, in my head, if I was Kano, I would have gone already to a mechanic. But I remember telling the car, hey, stop it. Are you hearing me? I have not taken it to the mechanic. I don't plan to. I told it to stop. Somebody shout hallelujah, glory to God. I told it to stop. Because the one I follow spoke to trees. Somebody shout hallelujah. You learn to speak to your radios. You speak to your hair. You speak to your body. You speak to your heart. You speak to your eyes. You speak to everything. You, hey, you speak to everything. Some of you, your bugs should hear you. Are you hearing me? Your clothes should hear you. You look at it and tell it this is the last time I'm putting you on. In Jesus name. I know you've heard me. Are you hearing me? Why? Because creation has an honest expectation. That means it has a conscience and an intellect attached to divine purpose. And every time you pass a tree, it looks at you too. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Speak to cars. Speak to people. I told people in 2014, Bishop, in 2014, that it was not possible to have a weekly meeting of 1,000 people in Uganda in 2014. Lunch hour or evening. If it was a weekly meeting, you could not have it in 2014. You're all my witnesses. And I remember when we told people, oh, we're going to start services midweek. He said, you know, people who are like, you know how somebody will give you this answer like, praise God. <laughs> who, who has understood? <laughs> There's something on your life. But you can see every thing is telling you this guy doesn't believe it but he don't want to disappoint you because if you think he has a lot to say somebody shout hallelujah what have you seen what have you seen 
We've done it. We've done it. <laughs> now the grounds are not big enough for us. Now we are clocking into 20,000 people on a weekly service in Uganda. But let me tell you, <laughs> I remember, and up to today I still do it. Sometimes when I'm alone in the car, I put the window down and start speaking to Kampala. I still do it. You're joking. You're joking. I tell it, you must hear me in the name of Jesus because greater is he which is in me than he which is in the world. I don't care how, I don't care where, through who. All I know is the gospel must be preached and Jesus must be known. Sometimes you must learn to speak crazy. Speak to yourself. Go before buildings and talk. I remember before we started the meetings, I would go around Kololo, Kololo. And every time I meet it, Kololo grounds, I point and I'm telling them I'm coming. I'm coming. I tell them I'm coming. Are you hearing me? Yes. When you reach stadiums, point and tell them we are coming, brother. We are coming. Even if you don't have a bank account, are you hearing me? And you pass a bank, you like, you tell it I'm coming. I'm there. I'm with you. We are together. I have an account. The God that calleth the things that be not as though they are. As though they are. In fact, it's an error to say, I will be rich one day. That you have not understood the gospel. No, he calls the things which be not as though they are. Oh, I'm blessed. I'm anointed. I am great. I am healthy. Somebody shout hallelujah. And the Bible says, with your mouth you shall be justified and with your mouth you shall be condemned. If you say you're sick, you are actually sick. It doesn't matter whether you feel it or you don't. Because everything around us is speaking. And we just need to speak back to it. Sometimes I drive around trees and I'm like, I don't know whether we are still together. Because probably somebody's in the congregation thinking like, oh my God, this guy is gone. <laughs> He's gone. He, he talks to trees. He's gone. This guy is gone. He's gone. One time I was driving somewhere and I shared this. This has happened to me about five times. Five times to be exact. I was driving once and I saw a wonderful hill. I was with a guy in a car called Isaac. And I said, oh, that's a very beautiful hill. And a desire came in my spirit. And I said, I must own property there. I have property on that hill. I, now, the guy is looking at me like, you have your buying I see it there mine is there and then I drove away three years after that confession somebody came in the exact spot I pointed and he told me there's somebody selling a property up there I didn't even care the price anymore do you understand what I'm saying I didn't care it was not money about it was not about money anymore because when a woman is pregnant and she confirms she's pregnant you don't need to tell her that she will give birth every process necessary to bring forth that child by God is availed isn't it now you find somebody saying, oh, I prayed about it, but you know, the price is high. You, you, you don't understand it yet. You don't understand it yet. See, the gospel we believe buys without money. You understand? And bear with me, Americans. Because recently an, a report was released in Uganda. 93% of Ugandans who have accounts do not have more than a million shillings on them. How much is a million shillings in dollars? $300. 
93% of the people that own bank accounts in this nation don't own more than $300 on their account. If we don't teach them how to believe God, poverty is a bad spirit. We still have women who are giving birth on their way to hospital because they cannot access a hospital. We still have people in this nation who are being operated and after operation they sleep on the ground because they are not bed. So you must understand, when we empower our people to believe God, because we don't want aid. We don't want aid, no. We want to believe God. Somebody shout hallelujah. They believed God and God made them a success. We will believe God. And Uganda will be a success too. Not by power, not by might, but by His Spirit. Somebody shout hallelujah. And the answer is in the gospel. The answer is in the gospel. So when I'm telling you to create, I mean it. Some of you, you're going to enter places not because you know somebody not because you have money no but because you believe God and yes we'll go to heaven too and yes we'll live righteous lives and yes we will serve God for we can do all things somebody shout amen, amen. the world is responding the institutions of the world are responding to you. You must see it. Somebody shout hallelujah. You must feel it. Whether you went to school or you did not go to school. Whether you have a friend here or you don't have a friend. Whether you have a connection in the government or you don't have a connection in the government. Sometimes you must understand that everything God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above that which you dare to ask or think is according to the power that works in you. Are you hearing me? I don't trust in my government to bail me out. Somebody shout hallelujah. I don't trust. No, I don't trust in any man. No, no, no. No. The Bible says he committed himself to no man because he knew what was in all men. All you have to do is to commit yourself to God. This is coming. You tell him, God, I don't know how. I don't know where. I don't know which way. But I don't want to make a decision because I'm just excited. Direct my steps on this and God says in the simplicity of that prayer if you can just consistently bring the issue first to me oh somebody told me if I invest a million shillings I'm gonna get two next month and boom the gullible one pays immediately why because the person who told them is their sister and they trust them and then two months later it's gone all of it is gone Oh, my money. I lost my money. Where is my money? Oh, I lost my money. I, but I trusted her. I knew that she could do this. Yeah, you did trust her. And perhaps she didn't take it too. You remember the year I stood on the pulpit and I said, Christians, this year, thus said the Lord, do not invest in Ponzi schemes. You remember that? About four or five months later. In fact, I remember on that overnight, I actually said D9. To be specific, I said there's something called D9 and a few others. Don't invest in them. In fact, a few people sent, you know, they sent fire on me. Why are you making people? Why are you, why are you, why are you disturbing people's businesses? What's the problem with you? How much do you want? And about six months later, D9 was down. And people lost millions and millions and millions of shillings. Thanks, speaking believers. Thank you. Tongue speaking believers. And do you know, it looks so stupid on us. <laughs> you understand? Such mistakes look so stupid on us because you, you look like you know God. You understand? Eh? And, then, and then something messes you up and flips you and people are like, wow, we thought you hear God. We thought you hear God. You, you shouldn't have missed this. You shouldn't have missed this. And I know many people in this room can have similar stories. If I was to give microphones to some of you, 
Somebody will say, Apostle, one time I went into this decision and invested this much. I was sure it was going to work. I've lost billions. I've lost millions of dollars because, and you know, when they get that, they even committed to God. They even saw a seed. You understand? Somebody, somebody sows a seed and says, this is my point of contact for this miracle. <laughs> Did you commit it to God? Simple question. Those of you who have been around me for long, you've noticed. Every time you bring some, I'll tell you, let me pray about it. Let me pray about it. And I will go straight to this man because I've been burned. I've been burned. I don't even want to tell you my stories. You'll ask me many questions that I have no answer for you right now. And yet I'm your pastor. So let's act like you're the one who makes it me. I'm cool. So <laughs> I go to God and I tell him there's this issue. And he has simply asked you to commit it. He's not asking for much. He's just asking you, can you just bring it in a conversation? And you might not hear him speak. Sometimes he'll speak and tell you do it. But sometimes he won't speak. Just be quiet. He won't speak. But what he has promised is if he can examine the heart that has committed and has chosen to trust him, he has promised that he will cause your thoughts. Did you hear that? He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable. That means sometimes those thoughts are not going to be agreeable. They might not be agreeable. But you'll feel, you'll feel a turning in your heart telling you, come out of this. Just come out. And everything in you, the carnal man will be telling you, stay in, you're missing money, Rebecca. But something will tell you, just come out. And then you'll find yourself saying, you know, I'm sorry, wait a bit. And then a few months, a few weeks later, it comes out. And God says, this is exactly what he's saying. That sometimes it's not just the decision to go into it. But sometimes it's the instructions on the journey. The few milestones you might miss. Now, I'll give you an example of ministry. Ministry ministry is not a one-time instruction it doesn't work that way i have called you and i've sent you to go and show the world that i am lord yes and then you think that because of that you're going to preach every sunday and people are going to see your god you're joking it doesn't work that way you're going to start praying and god will appear you one other day and tell you you know what in doing this Start this way. Do this. Call this person. Relate to this person. Read this book. Listen to this preacher. Do this. Do this. Sow this seed to that ministry. Let go. I know she insulted you, but there's something on you that will be frustrated if you keep this nasty attitude. You know, it's those little small instructions. One time, somebody did something to me and I went to God to commit it. And the Lord asked me a question. He said, Grace, did you seek my opinion on starting that relationship? Did you? Touche. He had me where he wanted me. I told him, bit father. Come on, go ahead, kill me if you want to. I mean, what, what should I do? I mean, it, it has hit me. And then he tells me, even to the minutest details of your life, engage me. If you're going to start a relationship, engage me. Just go on the side and tell, him, and tell me, this person has said they want to be my friend. What do you feel about it? And sometimes the spirit will tell you, love him afar. Bless him. If he's going to look for food, put it on his table. If he's never, uh, 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 if he's without shelter, give him a roof to sleep. But create this boundary, not because you don't love him, but this is not the relationship I want to build for you. Sometimes he'll tell you, not now, wait. At the right time, I'll do it. Listen, ladies, you have to, especially ladies, you even have to go to the detail of asking God the hair you do. You understand what I'm saying? Because women are gifted people. Every time something is new, news. And married people, married men, you know, we've been in trouble with. 
You know, like one time, I'm sorry, I'm going to report my wife. You know, do you know, sometimes women change hair so much that you don't know when it's changed. Men, help me so that when I go home, I'm encouraged by your hands. Please, please, okay, help me. So they go to the saloon and they come back. And for you in your head, you think the hair is the same. But the lines that were going like this have gone like this. And it's important. <laughs> so I used to have this, what do you think? And I'm like, about what? And I know I'm already in trouble. <laughs> Sometimes I can't say about what. I'm like, what do I think? Mm, I'm waiting to get it. <laughs> and sometimes it. <laughs> so, you're lucky. Yes. So, you have to study very well there. Yeah, the weave uh, and, and say, okay, how do they weave it? Okay. Ah, okay. Now, we even study the fashion sometimes and they're like, so it's this side. You know, it's, it's this side. Also, it's this side. So, so sometimes you fall and this time it's what? This side. Uh, you're like, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I remember the days of I'm going to the saloon and I'm like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Because she's going to the saloon. So I know that, <clears throat> that my opinion, anyway, but this is what, sorry, I went there. Sometimes it's even important to ask God, God, does this hair bring you glory? It means some, I'm telling you. Okay, by show of hands. How many of you have ever seen a hairstyle and you're like, this one didn't seek God? Put up your hand. <laughs> Is it only me or somebody? <laughs> you look at some hair and you're like, you want to ask her, did you pray? <laughs> Things like a snake like that. How do you have a, how can a born again Christian have a snake on your head? Serpent power, you're done. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> if it means asking God, which shop should I go to buy a shoe? Gentlemen, ask. Take that time. Eat, get engaged God because he's in charge. You're not. The message version there in Proverbs 16 says it. He says, God is in charge. Give me the message of that. Is it up there yet? Uh-huh. Put God in charge of your work. Just put him in charge. And it's amazing when you start to ask and commit everything, you start to see thoughts that are directed and guided by God. And when people relate with you for so long, they'll actually say, this man, this woman, there's something about them that follows God. Every decision they're making has an instruction and a print of God. Listen, when you do that, you'll save yourself from many trouble. Many a trouble and tears. Trust me. Trust me. Get to your feet. Now I want you to just take three minutes or two, two or three minutes and just speak to God concerning this message. Ask him to help you sink it in your spirit that you'll carry understanding Can you raise your voice and talk to God? Tears so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know that 
Come and speak to God. Jesus, Jesus, how I God want to thank you for your word tonight and some of us in retrospect can see the mistakes the errors that we have done because we did not commit our way to you and we ask you from today in the simplicity of that truth yet depth of its conviction may we from today keep the mind and heart to commit things to you that our thoughts will be guided into your will and purpose concerning our lives because it's not us, it is you, O oh God. And I pray for those who, for whom it is redeemable that whatever you have lost because of wrong decisions, may God redeem it for you in the name of Jesus. May God recover it for you and may he give you a chance to start again and walk and run in Jesus name for he says I will store the earth that were eaten by the canker worm and the caterpillar the locusts I thank you oh God because there is a mighty restoration there are people here who have lost a lot and not only has it brought shame to you but it has taken so much from you but I feel in my spirit that there is a power also through God's grace to redeem what you have lost and you are going to see it come back to you and God is going to give you another opportunity to rebuild it again in Jesus mighty name shout amen if you're sick in your body right now receive your healing in the mighty name of Jesus somebody has a bad pain in your lower abdomen and I hear a name like Rachel you have a bad pain here, lower abdomen. It has been there for some time. Wherever you are, put up your two hands. I want to pray for you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command that spirit of infirmity and disease to leave you right now. And may you be healed. Get out of her body, devil. I command you. Lose her. Lose her. Lose her. Lose her. Lose her, lose her, lose her. In Jesus' name, it is done. Give the Lord a man of the faith. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 I just remembered something. Give me only two minutes. I was supposed to announce, because I announced in the previous service, I was supposed to announce the couples that are getting married this uh, this uh, this month i'm so sorry give me only two minutes give me only two minutes where is my paper where is my list where did i put it give it to me please let's do this for all. you don't need to sit you stand up because we are leaving stay standing sorry 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 are they still around are the couple still around uh-huh where is joab 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 yeah yeah is he around oh you left He's there. Joab, come, come. Joab got Sheila. How many of you know Joab? Put up your hands if you know Joab. Joab is one of the most fire spitting evangelists. And I'm talking about street preaching. When I saw him street preaching, I knew he was going to get a hot girl. Sheila! <laughs> Glory to God. And then I have an alien Gozi and, and uh, Jacob Olwafemi. I don't know whether they're still around. Are they still around? Are they still around? Ah, oh, they left. Okay. And then I have a Kawa Martin and Lona Mbazira. Come. Yes, these two. We have to, you have to know. Come. 
Come, I want you to see their faces. Such so that when you see them walking together. Let, let, yes. So, I just wanted you to see these faces because it's our responsibility as a church to announce them before that happens. I prayed for them in the first service and I believe the prayer was hard. But ladies and gentlemen, Joab and Sheila, Martin and Lon. So, wave at them, tell them we wish you well. You're entering a good institution, you will not cry. You'll always be happy in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Oh, Joab and his wife are getting wife to be wife speakers of the things that are, that are not. Joab and, and, and Sheila are getting married on the 19th of March. Uh, Aileen, who is away, I think, but they were with us in the first service. Aileen Gozi and Jacob Olwafemi are getting married on 25th of March. And then these two, Martin and Lona, are getting married on the 26th of March. And um, put your name. He's getting married on. <laughs> there are children to pray for. Are they here? Some parents want to dedicate their children. Can we pray for them and they go? Thank you very much. Uh, which parents are dedicating today? I'm told there were parents dedicating children today. They're here. Okay, come if you know you're on this list while I read you. Chiwendo Zion Adonai, Alinda Roma, Janelle Davis Chibira, Anna Masi Mwesigwa Atesa. Please come with your children and we pray for them. Come. Look what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. Anybody else? Mari de Goshe. Sorry, that skipped me. Oh, those of you who are on live stream, I'm told that uh, I think what you'll do, those of you who are on live stream, wherever you are, in whichever center you are, they can already send me the names. And then while I'm praying, I can always pray for your children if you're not able to come because we don't want somebody to travel from afar because you're not able to get here. So if you're in live stream next time, talk to the leader at the center. Let them take the details of your children and the day they are to dedicate them. Let us have the collective name here, names here, and then we'll dedicate those children. Is that okay? As parents, your responsibility is very simple, yet very profound. To raise these children in the way that you should what? They should go. And that I know you coming here means that you agree to that. Or if you did not know, you must agree to that because it's your primary ministry. Stretch forth your hands towards these children. Holy Spirit, we thank you for these children. The Bible says that children are an inheritance from the Lord. Blessed is the man whose cover is full. For Cho Chiwendo Zion, for Alinda Roma, for Janelle Davis Chibira, for Anne Mercy, Moise Tessa, and any other child that might not be on this record on paper but is here to be dedicated all these hands are committing these children to you for the bible says you're able to keep that which is committed to you to the day of christ our hearts prayer in the mighty name of jesus is that our children like you have promised in the word will be taught of you and their peace shall be many that they shall be for signs they shall be for wonders that they will be potents wherever they will go establish them work in their lives let them be ahead of their peers. Let them go to their grave full of age as a stock of wheat in its season. Let them be used of you in their days to come. May they never give in to the deceptions of their time. May they never give in in the delusions of their hour. We thank you because they shall be bright lights. We thank you because they will lead this world. Their heads are not the tail above and not beneath upward and forward they will go only 
none of these parents is going to marry their children. Is these children who will marry their parents who will be full of age as a stock of wheat in its season. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed and believed. Amen. Nice weekend. Oh, sorry. Those of you who want to get born again, come. How did that even skip me? If you want to give your life to Christ, please come now. And we pray with you. Please come now. Please come now. If you say, I want to be born again, please come now. That's the greatest miracle. Come, if you want to give your life to Christ. Somebody needs to get born again today. You're, they're there, come. God bless you as you're coming. You know why people are clapping? Because that's what's happening in heaven. Oh, 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 oh. Come. Come wherever you are. Come. Come and receive Jesus. Come and receive Jesus. Come and receive Jesus. wherever you are come 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 it's your day come oh thank you Jesus come Anybody else? I feel there are two people on my right. Come. Please come. 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 You know you're supposed to come today. Come. 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 This is your day. Come. Thank you, Jesus. That's one of them. That's the second one. Give the Lord a medical of praise. Hallelujah. You are entering the best thing that will ever happen to you. Hallelujah. Aren't you the one who was healed? Are you the one? I think I know this girl. You're the or, or, or Ndawla's sister. This girl, I, I visited uh, Ndawla. Huh? And uh, I said, this girl is not well. And she was sickle-celled. And I prayed for her. And she goes to the doctor and they're saying she's no longer sickle celled. Isn't that so? Give her the mic, tell them. Is what I'm saying true? What did your doctor say? He was shocked? My doctor was so shocked. And so when I went back to him, he was, he was like, it's impossible. And I was like, I don't have sickle cells anymore. Her, her sickle cells became normal. Now a Muslim doctor checking her body said it is not possible. Oh, may God do that. May God do that. May God do it in your life. May he do something that is not possible. And now today she comes to give her life to Christ. <laughs> Repeat this as after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you because you shed your blood 
for me and you were raised for my glory. Tonight, I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. My life is changed because it's committed to you. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you. Because the Bible says you're able to commit that which is commit you're able to keep that which is committed to you to the day of Christ these people have given you their lives and I'm sure that they'll make it in Jesus mighty name see you Thursday carry somebody on Thursday okay carry somebody on Thursday carry somebody somebody shout hallelujah see you by Fenero Ministries International for more information about the great work of God Visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app, available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Fenero, make manifest.